Hello, I'm Professor George Easton, and in this video I'm going to discuss the Pareto Principle, which as you'll see I think is an extremely important idea in the context of Six Sigma and quality management more generally. So you probably already basically know what the Pareto Principle is. It's the famous 80-20 rule. It's the idea that things like 80% of the complaints come from 20% of the customers, and so on. Or in the words of Joseph Duran, it's that there are a vital few things that have the vast majority of the impact, and all the rest of the things are the trivial many. So the key idea of the Pareto Principle is that a small number of things lead to the vast majority of the result. So you're thinking small number, vast majority. The Pareto Principle was developed by the quality guru Joseph Duran in the uh, 1940s, so it's been around a, a long time. And Duran was basically inspired by the work of Pareto, 19th century economist. And what Pareto had observed is that in Italy, around the end of the 1800s, about 80% of the land was owned by about 20% of the people. So what that meant at the time is that about 80% of the wealth in the country was owned by 20% of the people. Now, what Duran did was take this idea and apply it in the context of quality control and manufacturing. And so the traditional or standard application of the Pareto Principle is that 80% of the defects are due to 20% of the causes. Or to say this a little bit more abstractly, a small number of causes are responsible for the vast majority of the defects. So if you're looking at a process and you look at the and you look at potential causes of defects for that process, the vast majority of the defects will be due to a very small number of the possible causes. This is the idea that's taught in all quality-focused courses and training. It's absolutely standard in the area of quality management and Six Sigma. Now, Duran also created a diagram or chart to go along with this idea of the Pareto Principle. And the Pareto chart is one of the seven basic quality tools. I'll talk specifically about the seven basic quality tools in a separate video. But what the Pareto chart is, is it's a bar graph with one bar for each of the possible category of causes. These bars are then ordered by frequency from the most frequent to the least frequent. So the most important cause goes first. And in addition on this chart, the cumulative distribution is usually also drawn. So here's an example that is constructed to show causes of late arrivals. It may be late arrivals of employees to work or students to class or whatever. But what you can see is, is that we have a list of possible causes here. So traffic is a cause, child care, public transportation, the weather, and so on and we have plotted in the bar graph the number of instances that that has occurred. You can either plot the number or you can plot the percentage. Uh, and those bars have now been ordered by the most frequent. So what we can see in this chart is that traffic is the leading cause of late arrivals with issues relating to childcare next and then issues relating to public transportation third and so on. But the basic idea of the Pareto Principle is that 20% of these causes will result in 80% of the late arrivals. Now in addition on this chart there's plotted the cumulative distribution. So for example the top two causes here relate to about 60% of the late arrival. The top three causes are approaching looks like about 78 percent and so on. So this line is just the cumulative distribution of the causes. So this shows you essentially what the Pareto chart is and it's an extremely important quality tool. So how is the Pareto chart used? Well it's used to clearly show the most important causes 
and in doing so it's used to set priorities. What this means is that the focus of any kind of improvement effort or defect reduction effort should usually be on the first category. The first category is the most frequent category and therefore generally the most important category. Once you've focused on the most important category and it is either eliminated or dramatically reduced, then the Pareto principle typically will apply to the remaining categories and so you're going to move on to the next most important category and so on. But the real power of the Pareto principle extends far beyond just eliminating defects in a process or ranking the most important causes. The real power of the Pareto principle is that it is an abstract idea about a few things causing the vast majority. It's widely applicable. In fact, it's really quite incredible how often this idea applies in real life. So what I want to do is really highlight the importance of Pareto thinking. So what is Pareto thinking? Well, the idea of Pareto thinking is that a small number of things are responsible for the vast majority of the result. This little diagram here summarizes it. A small number causes the vast majority. So it's small number, vast majority. That's the basic idea of Pareto thinking. This is profoundly important. I really can't emphasize how important this idea is and how useful it is in real life. The Pareto principle allows, it really demands, focus. Okay, focus on the vital few. And in doing so, this provides a great deal of simplification. And then finally, that focus and simplification results in a great deal of clarity. It is stunning, almost mystical, how often the Pareto principle holds. So let's talk about some applications in the context of Six Sigma. And I think in doing so, you'll begin to see why I think this is so important and why this Pareto principle pervades my thinking about Six Sigma. So for example, within an organization, a small number of processes are going to be responsible for the vast majority of the organization's performance. Now this is extremely clarifying. For example, if you're beginning to implement process-oriented management for the first time, you need to identify that small number of processes that give you the biggest bang for the buck, so to speak, and that's where you're going to begin to implement process-oriented ideas. Within a process, you only need a small number of metrics because a small number of measurements are going to give you the vast majority of the information that you need to control the process. Even within a process, a small number of the process steps are going to be the most important and are going to be responsible for the vast majority of res the result. For example, the vast majority of customer satisfaction. Now this next bullet is extremely important, especially in the context of professional services. The vast majority of the work falls into a small number of categories. And this means that the work in the small number of categories can be cast into processes because they happen relatively frequently and there are a small number of them. And the amount of the work that doesn't fall into those categories, which will only be 20% of the work, that will have to be handled on a custom basis. So we're going to return to this idea because it's extremely important. And I do want to just comment right here is that the the reality in professional services of how the work falls into these categories is very, very different than how it will seem to the people doing the work. And the reason is, is it's the non-standard stuff that consumes the vast majority of their attention. But this is an important idea and we'll come back to it in other contexts. So about 20% of the improvement projects will generate about 80% of the savings. About 80% of the participation on improvement teams will be due to 20% of the employees. A small number of your suppliers will cause the vast majority of your problems. And the idea just goes on and on and on. It's just, it's just so widely applicable throughout Six Sigma and the ideas of Six Sigma and really throughout business. So here is my conclusion. The Pareto Principle is a gift from God. Obviously, I say this somewhat tongue-in-cheek, 
but it really rises almost to that level. So use it. Pareto thinking should pervade your thinking about business issues and perhaps all issues. Okay, it's not just applicable in the context of your business life, it's applicable much more broadly than that. And the Pareto principle and Pareto thinking just might be the most important thing you learn in business school. And if you knew it already, then my highlighting the importance of it and perhaps motivating you to use Pareto thinking more in your business life and in your daily life, perhaps that's one of the most important things that you'll certainly learn in this course. So the Pareto principle, I truly believe, is extremely important and an extremely profound idea that you should bring to bear on a lot of your thinking, but I'm going to be using the Pareto principle throughout my thinking about Six Sigma and my discussion of uh, Six Sigma systems.